Hey everyone, welcome to Byte Sector. Today we're going to be talking multi gigabit. We've all had gigabit networking in our house or our workplace for the better part of the last 15 plus years. Now we're seeing a trend, a trend from people that say, I want faster. Gigabit's great, but 100 and 15, 120 megabytes a second just isn't cutting it in a day and age when I can have gigabit internet. So what's the solution? Where do you go? How do you get it in your existing PC? Can everyone have it? And is it for everyone? We're going to answer all those questions and more on the other side of the intro. So I think the big question is first, what is multi gigabit? It's everything above or faster than one gigabit per second. Not everybody can take advantage of 10 gigabit. That's 1.2, 1.25 gigabytes a second. Do you have a hard drive that writes that fast? Not many people do. In fact, you're probably going to be ending up using an M2 NVMe SSD just to get those kinds of reads and write speeds on both ends of the connection. So where does that leave the average user? One gigabit's not enough. I can't use 10. Am I screwed forever? Not really. So multi-gig seeks to answer that by introducing two additional speeds, two and a half gigabits and five gigabits. And that seeks to bridge the gap and give you more bandwidth without basically saying you've got so much you can't use it. First, we have to take a step back before we even talk network interface cards. If you don't have the right cabling, you're probably up the creek anyways. If you genuinely have long runs in your house, you want to be on category 6A cabling to take advantage of multi gigabit up to 10 gigabits a second. Assuming you have the infrastructure, how do you retrofit all of your existing gear? That's where these Aquantia NICs come in. They are multi gigabit ready. They're designed for low latency transactions. Aquantia actually markets them as gaming NICs. If you've got a desktop or a server with a, a spare PCI Express uh, slot on it, then you can definitely go and grab one of these Aquantia NICs, throw it in your computer, and you're off and running. If you just have a gigabit network and it's a sort of future planning, you've got the money to spend now, It'll run at one gigabit and it'll run just fine, rock solid. It'll also run at two and a half, at five, and at 10 gigabits. The great thing about these NICs is their price. An average Intel 10 gigabit network adapter is going to run you about $400. These will run you 90 US dollars or 120 Canadian dollars off Amazon. Let's crack one of these open and I'll show you what's inside. You get a quick start card, basically go download the driver. Inside, it comes in a nice little plastic case, foam pad on the bottom. Opening it up, you see just how small a card it is. It does have a heatsink on it. A beautiful card, dark um, gunmetal gray IO plate on the back, single port, black heatsink, black PCB, done nicely, you can tell it's for gaming. It also comes with a low profile P, uh, IO bracket in case you're going to mount this in a mini ITX case or a server where it has low profile PCI Express slots. Definitely a low cost option, so don't rule out the server option as, as a, an alternative to your, your desktops. We don't need a low profile bracket, so we're gonna leave it in the packaging. Throw that back together. And there you go. These cards are small. They're compact. They're not gonna generate a lot of heat in your system, even though they do have a heat sink. And you know what? I think it's time to start taking a look at the benchmarks and see, can we achieve 10 gigabit speeds in our network? 
All right, so we installed our Aquantia Action 10 gigabit cards. We installed one in our test bench. And we installed the other in our file server. As you can see, we're gonna just zoom in here for a second, but um, that is definitely, sorry about the focus, a 10 gigabit link that we've got going there, okay? The first thing I wanna do is try and copy a file between these two computers and see how well it works. Let's try a nice 66 gig file. I already put some files in a, a temporary directory since I'm not connected to, connected to the domain. Awesome. Wow, blazing. 8.8, 9.2 I think gigabit, gigabit we hit as a, a top speed, but it dropped down to two. That's disgusting. I knew that there were problems. Everyone's experienced issues with 10 gigabit transfer speeds and there's a lot of tuning involved. I did a lot of research prior to, to jumping into this episode because I wanted to make sure that we were getting the best possible speeds. So I'm gonna cancel that because that seems to have just died and fallen through the basement floor. Um, let's try a small test file. 9.8 gigabits per second, steady at 1.1 gigabytes a second reported by Windows, bam. We just transferred a 7.94 gigabyte file in a matter of seconds. Awesome, okay, so that's good. Let's try a large test file again, because clearly the link is capable of speeds up to the high gigabits, 9.8, holding steady at 9.8 according to Windows, 1.1 gigabytes a second reported up here, 55 gigs, 54 left, uh, and the speed is plummeting. It's down to 2.1 gigabits a second. I have a theory as to what's going on here, and unfortunately, I really don't have the resources to prove it. I mean, we're still going at 2.1 gigabits, which is well above, it's double the gigabit speed that most people are used to. Um, this is what is it, a 66 gig file we're transferring here. It's estimating about three and a half minutes remaining. Um, we've transferred about 20 gigs so far. So I have a theory here, and until I can procure more system memory, it's just a theory. But my theory is that when you create a network transfer, um, this part isn't theory, but when you create a network transfer, there's a buffer that's created, a write buffer. So before it starts writing to the hard drive, it writes to the write buffer, which is your system memory essentially. And so what's happening here, what I suspect is happening here, is we only have 16 gigs of memory in our test bench. And I think that with an eight gig file, we're like, we've got what? Roughly 12, 12 and a half free. So I think with our eight gigabyte file, we copy it all to the memory, the memory dumps it to the hard drive, and that's why we're operating at a full like 9.8 gigabits per second. With our 60 gig, 66 gig test file, um, obviously we don't have 60 plus gigabytes of memory in the system. And that's where we're running into a bottleneck is we fill up a write buffer, and even though we're copying to a, an NVMe PCIe uh, SSD, it's just not writing fast enough out of the memory. And it just fills that buffer up and that's when it hits a wall and crashes down to 2.1 gigabits. So as I said, I did my research before I got involved in this. For this initial testing, I didn't do any custom configuration on this side of the link. So I have configured the file server side of this link um, for a bunch of things. We're gonna go through them on this side and see if we can better our speeds. So, uh, one of the first things is on the advanced tab of the, the device, we're gonna enable some things. We're gonna first do jumbo, and they're called jumbo packets in the Aquantia driver, they're jumbo frames. They're disabled by default. If you're gonna run 10 gigabit, you're gonna wanna max those out. So we're gonna set that to 16,348 bytes. The other things we wanna touch right away are the receive buffers. Defaulting to 512, we want to max that out. Uh, the Aquantia driver maxes out at 4096. And our transmit buffers, default is 2048. We can max it out at 8184. 
It works in increments of eight. So we're gonna set that, click okay. It's gonna reconfigure the network card. It says disconnected right now and it popped back. Open it up, still got a 10 gigabit link. First, our small test file coming in, copy, paste. Received 9.9, 9.8 gigabits a second. That's awesome, 10 gigabits a second, woo. We hit the theoretical max of this link speed. Let's try our large test file now. I'm just curious to see if the memory theory works or if it, you know, if we don't hit a wall at all. 9.9 .9 gigabits a second, 10.1 reported by Windows, which seems impossible, but 9.9 .9 setting steady. We've plowed through our first 10 gigabytes. It's been like a matter of seconds. We're already 16 gigabytes into this transfer, still sitting at 9.9. .9. We're all 20, 22 gigabytes. Ah, about 23 gigabytes into this transfer, we crashed again in speed. So we were, I don't know if you can see this here, but um, we were topping out the chart over here, uh, right at the top 10 gigabits. And uh, once we got about 23 gigabytes into the transfer, we crashed again in speeds. Maybe this is due to the transmit received buffer limits being at 4,096 and 8184. Maybe it's related to jumbo frames. I would have to actually drop in a couple non-Aquantia NICs on both sides to, to see if Intel NICs have a different result, or if this is genuinely, we filled up our received buffer in memory and the memory just couldn't keep up. If we copy our large test file just to show the speeds that max out, our received speed is 10.0 gigabits per second, 9.9, 10, Amazingly, the overhead to send is about 50 meg, 50 to 60 megabits, but there you go. We've got absolutely crazy network speeds running. So to close the loop on this, uh, we were able to get 10 gigabit speeds card to card through a CAT 6A cable. I would say it was about 20, 25 feet. So well within spec. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed that we had drives that could read and write at those speeds. I'm very impressed that it all turned out, it all worked out, that we got sustained 9.9 .9 to 10.0 gigabit speeds. I do wanna do a more thorough look into the impact of system memory on the transfer speeds and see if we have 32 or 64 gigabytes of system memory if we don't run into those bottlenecks with the very large file transfers. Multi-gig is working amazingly. I would recommend it to anyone who has a system with 32 to 64 gigs of memory in it. Anyone who is looking to move large files around, presumably media files, because those are typically what run into the tens to hundreds of gigabytes per file. So it's not here today for the average consumer, but it will be here tomorrow for you guys. Just give it another 12 months or so for mainstream to start paying attention. Like all good things, it's worth waiting for. If you're looking for a great card to start, the Aquantia 10 gigabit network card is by far a great recommendation. At the price point, you just can't beat it. If you only need one port per machine, this is your card. It's the AQN107 from Aquantia. On that note, we hit 10 gigabits. It's the first time in our environment. When we get our 10 gig switch, it's gonna be 10 gig all over the place. It's gonna be nuts. But until then, we hit a milestone. I'm gonna let you guys go for today. Have a great day. If you like this video, give, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget, forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you know when we release our next video and leave us some comments. Tell us what you like about this video. Tell us what you didn't like. Say whatever you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great day and we'll talk to you next time.